Thank you for joining us today. Uh, it's time to begin worship and, and let's start with our prelude. Hallelujah. Christ has risen. Christ has risen. The tomb is empty and new life hovers in the dawn. Death can never be the last word. God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Christ is present among us today. Praise God for the new life that is within and among us this day. Hallelujah. Amen. And now it's time for our children's sermon. Good morning, boys and girls out there. Um, and, and what do we normally say, right? We normally say to the crowd, good morning. Good morning. And then what do we say on this Sunday? Christ has risen. Christ has risen. Yes, okay, that's awesome. And so think about it, right? It's Easter Sunday. I don't have to ask you what day it is. I know you know what day it is. And, uh, and what makes it so special? Can you think a little bit about what makes Easter so special? Let me, let me give you the answer, since I can't hear you answer back. I know that you would have a lot of answers for me if we were here in person together. But it's the day that Jesus came back to life after dying. Jesus died on a cross, and then he rose from the dead on Easter Sunday morning. And that's exactly why we're here celebrating today. That's why our church is gathering all over the city. Actually, there are people in different states joining us right now, and we welcome you. But I want you to think about something. Easter is all about hope. H-O-P-E, hope. And let me help you think about that a little bit. It's, it's kind of like... Um, Believing everything is going to be all right, that, that good things are going to happen. And in fact, it's, it's not just about hope. I want you to think a little bit more. I, I've added to this, and let me turn it around. Hope at Easter means to Christians that he rose, Jesus rose. 
He overcame death. That's H O. He pro he provided. Sorry, I can't read upside down. He provided for life. He provided life for everyone. Thank you for bearing with me. It's hard to read upside down. But when you think of Easter, I want you to think of hope. Let's have a prayer. Holy God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he loved us so much that he died for us. And we thank you, Lord, that he rose from the dead so that we will all have eternal life. We thank you for hope. And we thank you for this beautiful day and all the children in our church. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now it's time to move into to prayer. Um, I normally have a, like a list of prayer requests. Today, I think it's more appropriate on this Easter Sunday uh, to think about first responders. I'm thinking about people on the front lines of fighting the coronavirus, doctors and nurses, people working in grocery stores. I'm seeing trucks driving all around the city and in our neighborhood, and I'm thinking about the drivers of those, of those trucks that bring packages, that bring food, uh, that, that keep us going during this time. And so I want our prayers to be with them. And then I want to devote the rest of the joys and concerns time uh, and he doesn't like to be singled out in this way, but to Daniel Hawkins. Uh, let me explain for those of you that don't know Daniel Hawkins. He has been our pianist for how many years, Daniel? About 10. That's what I thought too. So a decade, a decade. I was young when Daniel got here. And so here, it's hard to believe, seriously, Daniel, that it's been 10 years. And uh, it's a blessing to have you here with us on Easter Sunday. But, you know, this is bittersweet. You know, uh, this is my standard line when something like this comes is I prefer to remain in denial until the moment of truth. Well, this is the moment of truth. This is Daniel's last Sunday. And so those of you who are out there, um, if you haven't already done so, I think Daniel needs to be bombarded with cards and emails. Um, he, he won't be a stranger. We'll be trying to stay in touch with you. And I know he has family here, so he has to come back in town. And I'm saying this in front of everyone so that he will live up to it, that every time he comes in town, if, if a Sunday is, is uh, if he's here on a Sunday, he has to come to church. So that's, that's one way that I can say goodbye without being too sad. But we are sad to see you go. We're happy for you and, uh, and your future, what lies ahead for you. And we will miss you very much, and we thank you for all you've done for our church for so many years. Thank you. If you have a Bible with you, you may want to turn to the 118th Psalm. And if you don't feel like doing that, don't worry about it, because I want to read excerpts from that Psalm as our prayer thought for the day. And it also coincides, I want, I want to show this to you one more time with our devotion, our Sunday devotion, which happens to, of course, be Easter Sunday today. And uh, it's Disciplines is the book we're working from. Christina is sending one of these out. Christina, our office administrator, every, every day to our church members. And so the devotion for Easter Sunday comes from Psalm 118. And let me read some excerpts from that Psalm for you. It's very appropriate for Easter Sunday morning. I give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. His steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. He did not give me over to death. Open me to the gates of the righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. 
And, and the woman who wrote our, our week-long devotion for Holy Week uh, is named uh, Kathleen Stevens. And, and I want to lead us into prayer with a, a short quote from Kathleen Stevens responding to the 118th Psalm. We were not made for lives of quiet desperation. Instead, we are meant to sing a song of God's salvation and redemption from now throughout eternity. Please pray with me. Holy God, this is indeed the day that you have made. And we're in a strange time together right now, a strange time in history. And it's tempting to give in to fears as we worry about the coronavirus. And yet Easter Sunday of all days provides us with a strong reminder that there is indeed hope and there is indeed redemption and, and there is resurrection and therefore there is no need to fear. Forgive our sins. Thank you for the chance to worship you. Please be glorified through, through what we're doing this day. Bring our church family together in spirit, not just on Easter Sunday morning, but every day of the week. And keep us connected to you, Lord, as we continue to pray, as Jesus taught the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture today comes from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10, the resurrection of Jesus. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will find him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. May God bless the reading of his word. Thank you, Dawn. And thank you, Alex. It was beautiful. And Daniel, thank you very much. Dawn and I, my wife and I, have been doing a lot of walking lately, almost every day. Uh, of course, the rain has kind of gotten in the way a little bit. And I guess it must have been one day last week when we were walking. It was, it was actually a sunny day, I know that. And we'd finished this long walk, and I was making my way into the kitchen, and I got a glass of water, and I had a couple of swallows, and then I started whistling. And, and Dawn looked over at me with this kind of, I know the look, you know, and I know the, the tone of voice. And, and, and she said, are you whistling the sound of music song? <laughs> okay, that's enough. But you know the song, right? The sound of music song. And I said, yeah, you know, as a matter of fact, I am whistling the Sound of Music song, and I just kind of couldn't keep from it, right? And I don't know that it had as much to do with Julie Andrews and the Sound of Music. It had a whole lot more to do with the fact that it was a beautiful spring day, and, and that feeling of freedom that comes from stepping outside after being in time out for so long. Our neighborhood is filled with people right now walking around. Maybe you're going through the same thing. I'm spotting all these faces that I, I would imagine have lived in our neighborhood for years. And, and we're seeing each other for the first time. That's one of the good sides of this whole uh, time out period, I guess, as I'll call it. Um, but on that day, there were people walking, uh, walking their dogs. Uh, there were children. There were adults. There were grandparents. The birds were singing, the flowers were blooming, nature is thriving now that we're staying at home and there are less cars on the road, right? And um, at one point, Dawn and I walked by this large bed of knockout roses. And these roses, uh, they, they sat under an oak tree that I'm sure had grown over time and the tree was starting to shade the roses. And it's an interesting image that I wanna to try to paint for you the best I can because they were starting to grow horizontally, not, not completely horizontally, but leaning out underneath the shade of that oak tree. And as Dawn and I walked by, uh, we both acknowledged, ah, they're looking for the sun. And as I thought a little bit more about that, uh, this is a fitting image for Easter, right? Looking for the Son, S-O-N. The two Marys were looking for the Son of God as they made their way to Jesus' tomb on that first Easter Sunday morning. And I, and I think about that. 
And I think about what they were going through or must have been going through. I could imagine they were numb with grief until they got there and saw that the son was gone in this case. Just as we can't remain forever sequestered in our houses or rooms, I know you can relate to what I'm saying right now. The risen Christ can't be contained in a tomb. Leonard Sweet, a writer, a preacher that I really enjoy, uh, reminds me of a story, and it's not just a story, but it was a point in history um, and I remember this as a little boy where you could actually go to a pet store or a five and dime store. In our case, the pet store was about two, two businesses down from the five and dime store. And you could buy baby crocodiles. And although that sounds kind of crazy today, but back then that was the thing, right? For a little bit, for a little while. And you would, you would go in and you, would, you could buy this little crocodile. It would be about six inches long. It would be in a cardboard box about, of about 12 inches long, kind of like a shoe box. And, and you can imagine, sadly, that most of those uh, baby crocodiles didn't live very long, but, but some survived. Sweet tells the story to make a very interesting point, and I want you to think about this. Crocodiles are one of the few animals in nature that keep growing as long as they are living. But there's an exception to this rule. A crocodile will only grow as big as the container it finds itself in. So if, if someone kept their baby crocodile in that little 12 inch box, kind of the shoe, si shoe box size box, they would have a shoe box size crocodile. But if they, if they let it out of the box and, and, and put it somewhere else, say a bathtub or, or maybe even a river, it would, it would just keep growing. Think about that. Crocodiles keep growing as long as they keep living Yet, yet, they grow only to whatever size box they find themselves in. This is a good lesson for human beings, right? Um, we may not keep growing uh, physically, uh, in height anyway. I think a lot of us are growing horizontally right now. But I'm talking more about growing spiritually, intellectually, emotionally as long as we're living that's a great challenge and we need to avoid getting boxed in jesus was destined to live outside the box he simply couldn't remain in a tomb the marys were, were i'm going to call them the marys or mary and mary apparently most biblical scholars would say that in Matthew, when, they, when they're talking about the Marys, one is Mary Magdalene, and the other may very well be Mary, the mother of Jesus. But, but the Marys were zeroed in on that tomb, focused on death instead of life, trying to get their minds and hearts around what had happened that morning. And they were experiencing a wide range of emotions. Our passage points that out from fear to joy, all at the same time. So the angel told them, do not be afraid. That's an angel's job. They're messengers who most often start their message with, do not be afraid. Alice McKenzie, another writer I enjoy, she's actually a, a preaching professor. Uh, she was at Perkins in, in Dallas for a long time. And, and listen to what she had to say about angels. She said, and this is appropriate for our time too, the angels in Matthew's gospel are like her UPS man. They're focused on their job of delivering the good news. And they aren't there to sell it. They're there to deliver their package, their message. And it's up to us to sign for it, to open it, and to use it. In our story, both the angel and Jesus reminded the Marys that they had a job to do. It was up to them to take their eyes off the tomb, shift their focus from death to life. 
Then go and tell the disciples that Jesus had risen from the dead. They were evangelists. Just like the woman at the well, they were called to share the good news that Christ is risen. Alice McKenzie went on to ask a pointed question for us. Why do we, like Mary and Mary, still come to so many situations alert to signs of death, disappointment, and defeat when we've been promised life and hope and victory is waiting there for us? Great question. Easter is a call to life. God has rolled away the stones of fear and death. And we get to live as, as Easter people, as resurrection people, sharing the good news that Christ has risen. Christ, Christ has risen. risen. There we go. Okay, they're, they're paying attention right now. Sharing the good news that Christ has risen. Christ has risen. Thank you. I just like that. Okay. In all that we do, and starting with hallelujah, praise the Lord, another very appropriate word, not only on Easter Sunday, but every Sunday, every day for that matter. Dr. Ellsworth Callis pointed out that even after the Marys followed through and told the disciples the good news of Jesus' resurrection, the disciples seemed aimless and confused. Some of them even went back to their old jobs what was their problem? According to Dr. Callis, they viewed the resurrection as the end of the story. It took them a while, really, to understand that, that Jesus' resurrection was, was really the beginning, the beginning of a new life in Christ. As Christians, we know that the resurrection is the beginning, not the end of our story. Resurrection people can't be contained in a tomb. And we get to keep growing every day of our lives. Like Mary and Mary, we have a job to do. To go and tell the world in word and deed that Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. This is our calling, our identity. We've talked about this for six weeks what is our calling? What is our identity? Living out the resurrection life. Helping others to step out into a hope-filled future and live with nothing to fear, especially death. Hallelujah. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Please pray with me. Holy God, we turn to you uh, on this beautiful Easter morning, missing our church members in person, but knowing we're together in spirit and knowing that you are with us, calling us out, Lord, to be resurrection people, calling us out to live out the spirit of hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of eternal life. Thank you, Lord that he is truly risen indeed. And we pray always in Jesus' name.
Before we move into our benediction, uh, I want to uh, remind you to stay tuned after our closing hymn for a surprise slideshow that Jessica has put together for us. I, I want to, at, at, at the same moment, thank Jessica not only for all the work you've done today to bring, make this possible, but for all the work that you and your husband Max have done over the last month to make this possible, that we can get together and worship uh, live stream. I want to thank everyone who showed up today uh, in person for Easter Sunday morning. And, and I, want to, I don't want to miss the chance once, one last time to single out Daniel. Thank you not only for being here today, but thank you for all you've done for our church over the past decade. You will always be in our hearts. Um, thank you for joining us for worship. Happy Easter. And I want you to remember today, say it at least, well, as many times as you want. I won't put a number on it. To, to people that come your way, people that you might be on the phone with, people that you might be in your home with, Christ is risen. Christ has risen indeed. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and give you peace. Go in peace and share the love of the living Christ with all who pass your way.